as you did, ended up doing more stuff with Whistle just for fun. Uh, you know, you did the Santa's a B-Boy, a lot of these other records with them. What made you work well with Whistle and with Kango, do you think? Well, I only did a few songs with Whistle. The reason why I personally didn't venture on with Whistle is because Kango is turning Whistle into a singing group. Because if we notice, I think from like the second album, Whistle was singing now. Right. Because Kango always wanted to be a songwriter. So he used Whistle to get his songs out. You know, because, you know, because Dr. Irison, educated rapper, wasn't going to be no singer. <laughs> <laughs> and Kango always loved to write songs. Okay. How could he get his songs now? He wrote for somebody else, which is his whistle. I wasn't into that. So I think we're like for the second album, I, I may have done one or two songs. But I was like, you know, that's when I end up, you know, working with my cousin Chubbs and some other groups, some rap um, um ESP, Puma, Lil Sean, because yeah. I was a rap, I wasn't into singing. Well, that's Puma is actually what I want to get to next with the Seaborn and Puma because they call me Puma. I remember that one was uh, sonically especially so hard compared Puma. to everything I had heard that you had done before. So what what made that lyrically, stylistically, and musically so hard by comparison? Because of the character of Puma, he was like real hood. You know what I'm saying? So we did, so I did the beat to match his character. You know, because if you notice, Puma's rapping hard, right? You know, and Chubb is doing the same thing. Because it was actually um, Chubb's a lad that produced Puma. They called me Puma. Um, but that's the reason why that song sounded like that, because I was I was doing the music to match his character and his rap. His rap style, you know, he was rapping hard, like, <laughs> so I did music to match the character. And like, and like you said, too, I remember, too, the credits were produced by Chubb Rock and Howie T or whatever. Right. So what did Chubb do? What did you do? Because uh, you guys did, you guys got a lot of credit for a lot of stuff together. So what did you guys, what did he specialize in? What did you specialize in? Um... That's a good question. <laughs> um, it said produced by Chubb Rock and Howie T because we were not only just a group. He's my cousin. He's our real cousin. Yeah, his mother, my mother, sisters. <laughs> you know, so since we were like a group, because his album is. Chub Rock, you know, either featuring or with, you know, you know, how we see. So it was like, it was almost like, almost, you know, like a full force. Gotcha. So person, right? <laughs> so it says full force. So it was something like that. Okay. Well, uh, this is going to factor in a little bit. Uh, again, too, because one of the things that I noticed as I was following your career as it was happening is that you regularly worked with people and then worked with them again later, even if it was in a different way. So like little Sean, when you were doing like the Heartbreak Hotel and My Girl's Mother. Mm -hmm. um, so with little Sean, I, I was intrigued because later he got a lot more popular, but on the Heartbreak Hotel, my girl's mother, he's like telling these pretty detailed stories mm -hmm. in the 87 era when that was starting to get, I guess, more and more popular. But as, mm -hmm. a, as a writer and somebody that was bringing his stories to life, what did you like about him as a songwriter like that? Oh, Sean is really, really good at hooks. He comes up with great hooks. So when I first worked with Sean, I knew Sean way before 
I was doing records. Because it's like all these guys lived in my neighborhood. And since I had records out, and since I, um, once I did, you know, um, a UTFO, I also had a relationship with, um, with um, Select Records. So it's like anything I brought Select Records, he would sign. Okay. So anybody in my neighborhood that wanted to do a song and it was good, we did it and brought it to Select. <laughs> and he signed them. That's what happened with um, um, ESP. That's what happened with Puma. That's what happened with Sean. With guys in the neighborhood that wanted to rap and they wanted to and they wanted to and they wanted to record a record. So we would do the demo or we'd do the song or bring it to select, he'll sign it, whether he liked it or not. Because he was like he was like a new label. So you know, and you know, at the time rap was hot. You know what I'm saying? Like, almost like anybody was putting out rap records. So it wasn't matter if he liked it or not. If I brought it to him, he figured it's good because of the success I had with um, UTFO and C3. He figured I knew what I was talking about. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Okay. So anything I did at that point, I would take it to select. And, and so, then, so that you know, so since I knew Sean from way back in the day, he wanted to make a record. We did a record, brought it to Select, got signed. And then, did you end up like becoming a staff producer, or were you just doing this all independently? Did you get a salary? It was, it was all independent. Okay. And. With, with all these record labels, I never had a, a production deal. Why? Did you not pursue one? You didn't care? I, like, I never pursued them. Why not? I don't know. It just never came to mind. <laughs> okay. You know, a guy, you know, some guys come to the basement, yo, we wanted, I got this rap idea, blah, blah, blah. I did a track, they rapped on it, brought it to the they signed it. And he paid me whatever on um, for the production. And that was it. Okay. So now, I never had like a production deal with Select to bring, you know, to constantly bring because I was taking it to him anyway. So <laughs> fair enough. Now with e ESP, they were also uh very different too, and they had the with the back wrapping kind of rapping backwards a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Man, I always loved that style, but nobody picked up on it. I don't know why. That was such a hot idea. It was, but remember, Nas did Rewind, where it's kind of like that. Oh, yeah? Yeah, Nas okay. has an, an amazing song called Rewind. You should listen to it. Oh, okay. Because when I first heard Rewind, I thought back to back rap, and I was like, Nas, of course, is like at the top of the, yeah, the yeah, yeah. he's at the top of the food chain, but it did <laughs> kind of remind me in a way. But listen to that, please. It's an amazing yeah, song. Okay, I'll check it out. I never knew that. Yeah, yeah. But um, that one also seemed like uh, louder, I guess is the best way to put it. But when you were, since you had worked with Whistle, working with UTFO, Full Force, all these different things, but then you also had Puma and Little Sean. And Chub Rock, when you got back or when you were doing the ES, ESP stuff, how did you find you were able to kind of move between a solo artist and a group? How did that work for you? Um, I kind of just, just, I kind of like just went with the flow. I, I, um, I hear what they wrote and I just did a track according to what their flow was. You know what I'm saying? They wasn't the type of rapper like Chubbs and Puma, loud and aggressive. They were like more laid back, almost like a ladies man type, smooth, you know. So, because if you, I don't know if you noticed, but the um, they were the first. I was the first one just um sampled the um the barge. Mm. 
Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that was what eighty six, and then Biggie did it. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because they were that type of, you know, so that's that, you know, that's the song I sampled. Because it was more smooth, RB kind of laid back, according to what they, you know what I'm saying? Back then sounds were still kind of big, you know, with the, a whole lot of reverb on drum and stuff like that. But as far as the groove, it was more mellow and uh, and laid back because it fit their style. Yeah, because then when you get to like the wild thing and we got it, that single, that to me was much more laid back flow and right. and then you hear like also the same uh, samples like for enough respect that Big Daddy Kane used later mm -hmm. and a uh, jingling baby all on the all on this one single by ESP. You can hear those beats, <laughs> right, right, right. Um, yeah. which I thought was cool. But this is also when. Uh, Chub Rock started emerging as a rapper. So what mm -hmm. what made him go from producing to wanting to be a rapper? He was always wanting to be a rapper. Always wanted to be. He is like I said before, his name was there on producer because <laughs> you know. So was your guy's name the True Blue Productions? Was that the two of you? No, no, no. That's two. That's two different, totally different people. They came into the mix when they started to manage Chubbs. Okay. You know, it was true management. So it also, you know, guys that grew up with, you know, in the neighborhood, so they wanted to be managers. Okay. So when I start, when I was continually doing, you know, different artists, I would not give the finished product to them or the demo to them, and they would do the shopping, you know what I'm saying? But they were they were managing the artists. I never had a manager. I never had a manager, ever. Wow. <laughs> I never had a manager. Why not? They wanted to, man they wanted to manage me, but I didn't want them because anything I did, anything they got me, I always pay them their management fee. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They never had to chase me down for their, you know, for their money. Right. If they got me a remix on whatever they supposed to get paid for giving me that remix, I paid them with no hassle. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So to me, I didn't need to be on no contract. Right. You know. <laughs> it, it makes things a lot simpler when you just do it that way. <laughs> right. Yep. Okay. So then when uh, you guys started working on the Chub Rock featuring Hitman Howie T, why did you add the Hitman to your name? Um, um, Full Force gave me that name. Because I was doing Roxanne before Chubbs. So the hitman came about because you know when Roxanne was saying, How is he hit me? And now we go, bam, bam, bam. So they figured the hitman, how is he? Because when she said, How he hit me, <laughs> you know, so that's why that name came about. And then they tried to give me an image as a hitman, you know, I had on, um, I had that look before on Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. <laughs> <laughs> You know, with the hat, with those black glasses and the black suit with the tie, I was going on tour with Roxanne like that. Wow. Because my was the man, how would she? And Hitman, you know, trying to make you look like a Hitman. But the hit they talking about was bad, <laughs> you know? You know, a stab, a record stab as a hit. Man. Okay. <laughs> you know, that's the, hit, that's the Hitman they talking about. Right, right. Okay. Not tough guy, and I'm like Roxanne's bodyguard type of thing. <laughs> he wasn't that kind of a hitman. Gotcha. The image may be that, but that wasn't what, you know, the purpose of the name was.
Be sure to check out the History of Gangster Rap by Soren Baker. He's official. History of Gangster Rap features exclusive interviews with Ice T, Snoop Dogg, MC Ren, the DOC, and dozens of others. The History of Gangster Rap, a definitive look at how Los Angeles changed rap forever. In Los Angeles, the streets definitely set the tone of the hip hop music. I'm 19, I got a $50,000 car. My whole angle always was I'll be street, but I will always tell you the horrors that go along with this life. There will be penalties and casualties for just wearing the wrong color in somebody's neighborhood. And once gangster rap made it from the streets to the TV, the genre exploded. What's that, five on your TV back for that WA? Yo MTV it just catapulted us from being local heroes to national gang bang rappers. The history of gangster rap discusses it all from 1980 up till today. There's always gonna be shit happening in the streets. You know what I mean? So it's always going to be something to talk about. The history of gangster rap in stores now.